My name is Christine Hughes and I'm an associate professor at the Faculty of Pharmacy. I teach the patient care process to the first year students and also was on the committee that developed the patient care process guidelines. Today I'll be talking to you about documentation of patient care. At the end of the presentation I'll be talking to you about documentation in my own practice. Welcome to the preceptor development session on documentation of patient care. In this session, we're going to talk about setting the stage for precepting documentation, talk about the elements of documentation, including the format, types of notes, and content, feedback and evaluation of your student, discuss a little bit about the preceptor role, and I'm just going to end with an example from my own practice. So in terms of setting the, the stage for documentation, documenting the pharmacist patient encounter is an important step in the patient care process. In order to set the stage for your student, there are a few things that you can do. The first is to identify and evaluate how you document in your own practice. So review with the student your practice setting, what are the main reasons for documentation, and where you document. In order to tailor the rotation and documentation discussion with your student, it's a good idea to get to know your student as a starting point. Try to find out how much experience they've had to date with respect to documentation. And third, share your approach with your student. What format do you use for document? Do you use free form notes or have some type of pre-printed forms? How often do you document? And when do you document? Right when you see the patient or after the patient at the end of the day? The students have been taught that these are the essential elements of a documentation note. The students will be in various practice settings, so they need to learn to document properly in that setting based on the practice. By having you aware of what the student has been taught, you can reinforce application of this process in your practice setting. The essential components include the date of the encounter, and in some cases, the time that it's written, the purpose of the note, so why the patient was being seen, for documentation of patient care, it should include the data, assessment, and plan. And finally, end with pharmacist identifier at the end of the note. The patient care process document has more details about the various aspects of documentation, and these are provided for you so that you're aware of what the students have been taught. Because they are learners, they will need to practice this skill, so a tip is just to help students focus on only including the relevant and necessary information to support their recommendation. Here's a sample documentation note format the students are taught in the curriculum. They're expected to use this format for seminars and skills lab. There are other formats which are utilized in practice such as SOAP, FARM, and DRP which are very similar and these are outlined in the patient care process document. The faculty recognizes that you use a different format, that is fine. What's important is to have a systematic process for the student to follow and insist that they make this part of their routine patient care. Documentation contents will flow out of the drug therapy assessment and creation of the pharmacy care plan. If these have been done well, documenting is then developing and refining the skill to prevent this information clearly. Guide your student about the documentation content in terms of the audience and scope. In terms of the audience, students should think about who is the audience for their documentation, what will they need to know, and what is their probable attitude about this topic. Often there are items in the care plan such as alternatives or pros and cons of each that don't need to be documented, although this may depend on the audience and intent of the documentation. Students should be guided about the level of detail required in your practice setting and which elements of the care plan are more, most important for documenting. In terms of the scope of the note, students should be guided on keeping the note focused and keep in mind the level of detail that is required. As a preceptor, there are three main feedback and evaluation areas that you can guide your student. The first is the appropriateness and the scope of the information included. Does the student include the right amount of information and is the note focused? The second is the quality of the content. Is the assessment and plan acceptable and are they clearly outlined and conveyed appropriately? Finally, the student should be guided with respect to the communication style, whether the note is clear, diplomatic and timely. And if the, if the note is written in a professional manner without being judgmental or criticizing of others. Some experiential courses will have a checklist for documentation provided with the course. This should be used for providing feedback and evaluation of your student. There are a number of ways as a preceptor you can guide your student with respect to their documentation skills. 
Early in the clinical placement, it's a good idea to discuss with your student your expectations regarding documentation of patient care activities and to review examples of pharmacist documentation in your own practice setting. It's also a very good idea to review the draft documentation notes with your students early in the rotation to identify strengths and areas for improvement and allow time for editing. Later on, as a student refines these skills in the placement, promote more independent documentation of patient care as appropriate. So I just want to highlight my own practice. I work in an ambulatory HIV clinic, which is a specialized clinic located within the outpatient medicine clinics at the University of Alberta Hospital. Patients are seen in the clinic by an interdisciplinary team, including social workers, pharmacists, nurses, physicians, and a dietitian. Currently, we use a paper-based medical record, although we're transitioning to an electronic health record. And the healthcare professionals document in the progress notes section of the medical record. And for more complicated consults, I also use a consult letter template. During orientation with my students, I'll explain what to document, when to document, why, and also how to document. So for example, when I'm seeing a patient in clinic, I typically document right at the time I'm seeing them, although this may be difficult for students when they're first developing their interviewing and other patient care skills. I also share examples of pharmacist documentation from the patient records. So an example of documentations that we would do include patient assessments while in clinics. So here we may inquire about the patient's adherence, their medication history, as well as medic medication management or document any side effects the patient may be having. We're also frequently asked to do consults related to treatment failures, so if patients have drug resistance or having some type of medication intolerance, and also cardiovascular risk assessments and recommendations regarding lipid lowering therapy. We also document any patient education interventions, follow-up, and other interventions that we do. Finally, I ask students to draft notes when they first start off in the clinic, and I try to provide feedback and edit prior to including in the patient record.